Welcome to the Pope on Film. This is Bunny Williams, and with me, the star of the show, Steve Galindo. Hello. I'm Steve Galindo. You can call me Reverend, or you can call me Pope, or um, Daddy, but only if you're, like, one of my kids. So you're you're probably not one of my kids if you're listening to this. Scratching that off my list. (laughs) Yeah, sorry. I mean, you can. You can call me that if you want to. It'd just be weird. It'd be a bit awkward. I kind of just like Rev, you know? Yeah. Rev. Rev, I I like that. Edge to it. You know, almost a you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, all right. I'm down with Rev. (laughs) Good article on your blog the other day. Uh, Which which article is that? The, The one... Ten years old at the gym. Oh God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that. There are certain songs that if I hear them, I will freak out and have an episode. And it's always been like that for about the past ten or fifteen years. But I've never really told anybody about it. Maybe one or two people in the world yeah. knew about it. So I started telling. I. I tried to figure out which songs it was that were triggers, and it's all 80s crap. <laughs> Madonna. Frickin' Madonna. God, I hate Madonna. I, I hope there wasn't anything in Guardians of the Galaxy that fucked you up. <laughs> no, no, no. That was mostly, like, like 70s sort of That was mostly stuff. 70s, yeah. Yeah, there mm-hmm. was nothing in there that freaked me out. Love that movie. Saw it three times in the, in the theater. But, uh... That was a- Wonderful movie. I love that movie. I love the fact that there was a cameo from, uh, uh, what's his name? The founder of Troma Pictures was in that. Yeah, I heard that. And uh, Lloyd Kaufman. And then all three of them Kaufman. have responded to him. Yeah. Yeah, he's a prisoner inside. You can tell mm-hmm. because it's like weird alien guy, weird alien guy, buff alien guy, and then him. Yeah. <laughs> Because he's not the sort of person you imagine seeing in a space prison, so when you see him, it's obviously him. It's really awesome. I was <laughs> scarred by tra- trauma pictures when I was a kid. Because uh, I remember going to the video store, going to mm-hmm. the video store, and my parents never cared about what I rented, and I saw a box that said the Toxic Avenger, and I'm like, sure, whatever, I'm nine. I'll rent this. Yeah, well, that's rough and for a nine-year-old. Oh, yeah, really horrible. It scarred me for life. <laughs> it but, took uh, me a really long time back to, to be okay with Going back to the gym, man, in my 20s, I went to the gym for a very short period of my life. And a big part of, of it that bothered me was the fucking locker room. I mean, it made me personally feel much saner than I normally am, <laughs> you know? But yep. it was like, these fucking people are weird. You I've know, been to gyms had, since then, and it freaks me out that that apparently most of the gyms in the world, when you shower, you have privacy. So I'm yeah. wondering why the hell I had to go to a gym where there's like 14 naked guys all having a big, friendly hug fest in there. Really it, creepy. There was there was no privacy here, and it was it was Valley's Jacqueline. Lane. You know, it was it was a big place at the time, but there was this one fucking little guy. He was like 80. And he would walk around like like he he didn't go in the gym. He went into the locker room, took his fucking clothes off, and wandered around for Christ knows how long, with a clutch God. earring in his ear, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and he falls down to his fucking knees, <laughs> like just like casually walking up to people, sitting down and talking to them. He like talked to me once, and I was like, "Fuck this place," <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, like, that was... you know, I, I, first off, it's a dude, okay? But second, it's like getting hit on by the fucking Crypt Keeper, you know? Yeah, yeah. But what made me feel really normal is uh, I would go take a shower, take my clothes off, go take a shower, you know? And I got a little dick, you know? I got shit to hide, you know? But then I go in there, and some guys, some guys are like, are like, lathering in unusual ways. Yeah. And then other guys then other guys are, are there in their swim trunks showering. I'm yeah. like, man, I'm not hiding it. What the fuck are you hot? Is there is there a vagina in there? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like, it, was a, 
it was a rough ticket to have to live through when you're like eight or nine, you know? Oh, oh God, yeah, much different. Much different. I'm but trying yeah, to think of like, a... I'm trying to think of like things that I had to go through when I was a child that nowadays, since now that I have kids, if my kids had to go through that, then it would just be just constant lawsuits about. Yeah. And I and that that locker room was a bit of a creepy situation. There's no way I'd let I like force my son to have to get nude every time he went to the gym if he didn't want to. I had a teacher in in a fifth grade. I remember this recently and I was trying to write it into a blog post, but I had a teacher in fifth grade and she was like in her 80s in the 80s, which meant that she was probably a teacher around the, the 50s and 60s, and we could tell because she was constantly putting on movies, like 8 millimeter, bad hygiene, public safety sort of oh. film, like a, like a mystery so science cool theater. Now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but we learned really quickly that the reason why Mrs. Buckner, that was her name, the reason why she would put on these yeah. movies is that she could go and have a nap in the back of the class, so it became a game to not make any noise and see how long we could keep her asleep. <laughs> and there was one time when we kept her asleep for a good 35 minutes after the movie was done, and it was just absolutely <laughs> wonderful. But she would always threaten to punish people in really weird ways, like, I'm going to make you stand in the closet for an hour, or I'm going to make you stand outside and hold these encyclopedias, and one of the weird punishment she would always threaten was if you kept talking, she would make you sit under her desk while she was sitting there. And one time, uh, one time Andy, uh, Andrew Bauer was talking a bit too much and he spent, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour sitting under her desk while she was teaching. Weird, withered, 80-year-old woman the type of old woman where she's putting used tissues in her sleeve, you know? Yeah. That's just that's pretty scary. That's a huge lawsuit right now. If you did that now. Oh yeah. 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 I don't even I don't even know if you can punish him. Don't you just send him to the principal's office? Yeah, I don't think I don't think you, don't think you can punish him anymore. I got sent to the yeah. principal's office once, and the teacher, the principal, who was a nun, she was like. We're going to call your parents and tell them how bad you've been. So pick up this <laughs> phone and dial the number. And I'm like, are you serious? You want me to dial the number? Okay, I'll dial the number. Number, 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 wrong number, wrong number. What? They're not picking up. I don't know what the problem is. None. <laughs> but I think one of the main problems is you told me to dial the phone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whatever. Freaking nuns. Cool. <laughs> I guess. I'm not really cool. That's the wrong response. <laughs> no, they, private school was private school was weird, especially since you know you go to school and you have all these nuns and priests and stuff that was that, that are trying to send you, and then you go home and your parents are drinking. Mm -hmm. and staying up until 2 a.m. I remember since I was like 7 or 8, my dad used to always tell me, Stevie, if God exists, then why did the Holocaust happen? Yeah. And it's so weird to have, to be to being taught one thing and then to have your parents just not give a crap about that. I was, I've always been like a person stuck between two sort of worlds, you know? Yeah bit odd. It's a bit yeah. weird. But now my oldest daughter, she's about to be 13, and she doesn't care for religion and doesn't get, care to go to church. But my oldest daughter just turned nine, and she came to school. She came home from school the other day, and she's like, Daddy, I got into an argument at school. My friend said that God doesn't exist, and I wanted to slap her. <laughs> and, and it's like, really? We're going to do this? Are you serious? And she's like, yeah, everyone knows the Bible is real and God exists and he loves us. And, I'm, and, I, and I, I felt really bad, but I went, okay, Bella, 
I don't know where you're getting this from, and I'm sorry to have to say this, but let me just uh, take a deep breath and ask you, if God exists, why did the Holocaust happen? (laughs) And that right there is the circle of life. Yeah. It's like the Lion King. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I I never had kids, so I missed out on all that joy. (laughs) It's it's really weird having kids because I've got three kids, and they've all turned out in various ways to be exactly me. Yeah. But in really weird sort of ways. It's it's odd. My youngest daughter won't stop talking, just absolute, won't stop talking. Constantly, 100% will not stop talking, and that was (laughs) absolutely me when I was growing up. And then my oldest daughter is a huge fucking smart ass. Yeah. And that's also well, me. She's at smart ass age, you know. Yeah, she's at a smart ass age. But, but then my right? my youngest yeah. my son just turned 3 and he 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 doesn't know who Dora the Explorer is and and yeah. doesn't really know Sesame Street, but he can tell you almost every monster Godzilla has fought. And it's wonderful. Yeah, see, that's kind of the thing I've been working on on myself lately. Um, trying to get box sets of, of those movies. So, like, I got the Universal box set, and I got the... Uh, oh, that's wonderful. The, the And really not even the whole Universal box set. I just got the, the Frankenstein line. Yeah. And then I got the cool ones because Frankenstein was my favorite. Yeah. Like, let me just get these. And I've been watching them like a lot because when I was a kid I knew all of those movies like the back of my head you know yeah when I when I was Just growing up and we first got cable they would always show those yeah. on uh, AMC back when AMC showed good shit yeah and, and uh, in school there were a couple of those kids that would talk about the movie the day before you know yeah you know and argue you know have those great arguments with Frankenstein or the Wolfman or things like that so like I, so like I'm trying to get to that same point of how I felt about them then, you know, because I kind of think I'll open up some synapses in my head that relates to my childhood, you know what I mean, yeah, you know like yeah, there what, are certain what, movies what, that I avoid, oh the movies that you avoid, yeah, yeah, because of my own childhood. Sort of. I remember when I was little, for my birthday, my mom and my older brother, they were going to take me to go see Bambi, and it was some re-release mm-hmm. back when they still did that sort of thing. But Bambi was sold out, and I was about eight or nine, so they took me to go see Poltergeist. Oh, okay. And I, I to this day... Well, that's this is okay. Little, it's got a kid in it. <laughs> right. It, to this day, I've, I've, I have not seen that film since I saw it in the theater. Yeah. Because it just, it just I, yeah. fucked me up so so bad. I, I That was a date movie for me. So, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, like, you know, I was already a horror fan. So, like, yeah. I was completely underwhelmed by it. The Scary Clown that you probably heard about, that's pretty good. You know, but a lot of, you know, the effects were off and things like that, and it's not one of my favorite movies. I know I know almost everybody loves that movie, but I don't care for it. it I just don't like it. It took me a yeah. really long time to finally be okay with horror movies. Yeah. It took me a really long time, probably because of Poltergeist and uh, the Toxic Avenger, that I just I spent most of my life just completely avoiding horror movies. It was only yeah. about the last five years that I've finally just been okay with it. So I'm trying mm-hmm. to play catch up, yeah. And it's difficult but, um, to play catch up with a whole genre. Yeah, but by the time Poltergeist came out, you know, video was already pretty popular, and I used to go to this fucking awesome mom and pop shop. You yeah. know, not exactly mom and pop. They, they were kind of funny, man, because because it was two couples, and it started as a vacuum repair place, <laughs> and they started putting videos in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the early days, man. Uh, started putting videos in, and then that just boomed on them, and they opened up a, a shop that was about the size of a blockbuster. You know, awesome. But it but it was two couples that were 
stuck in the disco era. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, shirts unbuttoned, gold chains, you know. Yeah. All of that kind of stuff. But to hear it pull, there was one one of the guys there was um turning me on a lot to a lot of the cult classics, you know, so like I would come in, he would come out come over to me and be like, See see blood sucking freaks? <laughs> blood sucking freaks? No. <laughs> That's so he's loaded me up with that shit and send me out. <laughs> that and snuff and oh my god, you know, just anything. Yeah. <laughs> so seeing Poltergeist is like, yeah, it's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I was absolutely physically incapable of of watching any sort of horror movies until I was in a robbery. I, well, well, see, this is like what I mentioned to you before, that this might be kind of weird, but, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> well, yeah. I it, blog. It, yeah, so. I, I blogged about it because it was just so, the weird thing is, is that in the media, there were pictures in the paper and on the news and uh, even in the New York Times where they, they blurred out our faces. And it's like, oh, well, thank God they blurred out my face because now no one will know which uh, Mexican with a mustache who is wearing a suit and a tie who works at a bookstore, that is. Yeah. There are so many obvious brown men who wear suits and ties and work at a bookstore. Mm-hmm. So that 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 narrows it down to maybe five people in America. So <laughs> for you, at least my name is safe. But it wasn't until that robbery (laughs) happened that I was absolutely okay with saying, okay, well, if I've had a gun pointed to my face and I almost died, I'm pretty sure that I can go and watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre now and be okay with it. Yeah. So once once that that light bulb clicked in my head, then I've just, for the last five years, I've been trying to play catch-up with a whole genre and just, okay, I'm going to watch all the saws now. Okay, I'm going to watch going to watch all of these. I watched some of these already, but I'm going to watch all of this. And it's just, it's really wonderful. I, I remember when I was a, definitely. I remember when I was a little kid yeah. watching. I remember when I was a little kid, I, I watched a little bit of, um, uh, what's that movie that everybody freaked out about, but it, it, Faces of Death. Faces of Death, uh-huh. I remember watching that when I was a kid, and it, I don't know, like eighth, ninth, tenth grade, and everybody was freaking out about it, and everybody was oh, like, yeah. "Oh my god!" and and video stores banning it, and parents getting all pissed off. I watched oh, yeah. that recently, Not about a year video ago. Store. <laughs> and I watched that recently, and it's just the fakest crap in the world. Mm-hmm. So yeah. much of that is just. Obviously, just like the worst stage thing in the world. Like, how could so many people be against this? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely playing catch up with horror movies. So I, I haven't watched it since back in the day. So I might have to give it a rewatch just for that. But it, no, my it, video store had one. So five. much of that movie is just <laughs> so much of that movie is just the worst staged things in the world. But I was really yeah. happy recently to learn that the scene where they're eating the monkey's brains was fake. That made me yeah. feel really happy to learn yeah. that. Like, phew, let me wipe my brow on that one. That makes me feel a whole lot better. <laughs> so the giant claw, huh? Yes, the giant <laughs> claw. I, I, um, I looked up some information about the movie. It's a science fiction okay. film from 1957, was released okay. through Columbia Pictures. It stars Jeff Morrow, and I love mm-hmm. that man. I absolutely love that man. He was in um, uh, This Island Earth, uh, The Creature okay. Walked Among Us. He was in Kronos, which I just put on my blog and I really, really liked. Yeah, I kind of remember liking Kronos, too. I have to rewatch it. I think it's on Netflix. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. But I, I 
absolutely love that man, especially in the movie The Giant Claw. He is the the absolute 100% typical cheesy hero. I mean, yeah. he's a test pilot, which is mm-hmm. a career that hasn't existed for decades. He's yeah. a test pilot. He's got, like, a chiseled chin, and he's so cocky that he can just sexually harass whoever he wants. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, I, I didn't see much smoking in this movie because that's, that's one of the things in a movie like this I, I like to watch for. Uh, there was a good amount of, well, there was a good amount of potential drinking. Yeah. In it, when they were drinking the uh, the Applejack. Yeah. And, and where were they? In Canada? Did they crash in Canada? Yeah, they crashed in, they crashed in Canada because the the... The guy that they find says that French Canadian story about uh what do they call it the cacagna yeah 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 but they they didn't really get to that for like quite a while, man. It was kind of like the plane crashed, and then they were in the cabin with this guy drinking, and they they had the cops that looked like mounties and everything, yeah, like all right well, okay, we're here now um. Uh, so, so, but like he kept down in the glasses of, of Applejack, and he, he he even said something like, uh, "Well, this is going to go quick," or something like that. He made some mm-hmm. other reference indicating that they were all going to get shit faced that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the bird got in the way. The thing that I love about this movie, that I absolutely love about the Giant Claw, is that it's. It's written, it, it's it's well written, and it's really good, it, pretty good acting, and the the pacing is is okay. It's pretty good. I really do think that yeah. it's a an above average movie for the type of B movie science fiction film that it is. It's a pretty good movie until you see that damn bird. <laughs> Once you see that damn bird, that just Absolutely brings the movie down, like ridiculously down. It's a, it's a, it's a Muppet abortion. <laughs> yes, it is. And and I think they said buzzard, but I like to think rooster. Me personally, it, I I don't know what that thing is, but it's just the whole movie is good, and it's got some good sets, and and the it's it's a wonderful film. It's it's like they. Mm-hmm ran out of a budget when it came time to create the monster, so they had, like, a sixth-grade class make it. <laughs> and, it, it like, paper mache and big googly eyes, and parents go, oh, well, that looks cute. You kids did such a good job. But this is a <laughs> big movie. I just don't understand why oh. it looks so ridiculous. <laughs> IMDb doesn't give budgets, so no. I, I would be curious about what was spent on this. But I just wanted to be rooster, so I can imagine people behind the scenes, you know, all the second lieutenants and all that, that don't get speaking parts, saying, yeah. that's the biggest cock I've ever seen. So that's why I wanted to be a rooster and not a buzzard. Yeah. They use a lot of stock footage too. According to uh, uh, um, Wikipedia, they use um, stock footage from Earth vs. the Flying Saucer and War of the Worlds. Really? I didn't see any of those. They used a lot of stock footage in the beginning, man. The whole beginning with the narrator and everything, that was all stock. Yeah, well, the big narration is a big part of these kind of 1950s B movie sort of things. A bird yeah. as big as a battleship. They did a nice job transitioning from the stock footage over to uh, over to the the live action because they they kind of fooled me. I was like I was like, God, look at this stock footage, and then the one guy started speaking real lines. I was like, Oh shit! Yeah. Okay, we're in the movie now. <laughs> the first time yeah. that I was aware of this movie's existence, though, was. Um, and I'm probably going to be mentioning this movie all of the time, but it came from Hollywood. Yeah. 
1980 and Cheech and Chong and Gilda Radner. I realized this today because I was thinking about the Giant Claw on my way to work. The Giant Claw was my Avengers when I was growing up. Really? I, okay. I loved comedy oh, so. so much that I loved Saturday Night Live. I loved SCTV. I would oh, stay up this is way later to see all of example. these. Yeah, and I had all of these uncles that really shouldn't have taken me to these Cheech and Chong movies, but they did. <laughs> so uh -huh. I, the idea when I was young of seeing all of these people in one movie just absolutely blew my mind. It's like, what? You mean Gilda Radner's going to be with Cheech and Chong, going to be with John Candy? This is going to be amazing. I can't believe it. It was my Avengers before the Avengers. Seeing yeah, I got it. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Yeah, that is yeah. a really good parallel. Yeah. Yeah. It was, the, it was it meant such a big deal to me to see all of these people together. John Candy and Dan Aykroyd doing a Glenn or Glenda tribute. Just absolutely wonderful. I, just, I memorized yeah. every inch of that movie when I was a kid and just said, I am going to make it my mission to try and watch all of these movies. <laughs> and yeah. I'm pretty sure I've succeeded. I can name probably every movie that's in there. But I specifically remember seeing the hideous ugly bird in this movie in that movie. <laughs> it's like a marionette. Yeah. It's like a marionette with a hideous looking face. Oh, he was definitely a marionette, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was an interview with uh the the star, Jeff Morrow, and mm -hmm. I looked it up and he said that Apparently, no one in the cast had seen what the bird was going to look like until the premiere. Yeah. And that's got to be horrible <laughs> to think you're doing such a great movie. Because it is a great movie, but then once you see that Muppet abortion, it's just so horrible. <laughs> see them all rushing to the phones, like in the old movie reporters, into the booths calling their agents like, <laughs> there's a I wanted to mention there is a cell phone app like a like a like a game it's a mobile game version of Manos the Hands of Fate. Oh really? But, but it's it's created to look like a nineteen eighties Nintendo game. Yeah. It's really, really As amazing. It it's, yeah, it's two ninety nine, and it's the first time that I that I ever paid money to to buy a game on my phone. But I figure if I'm ever going to do that, it's going to be for Manos, the Hands of Fate. And it's a really mm -hmm. cute game, and you you have to fight Torgo, and you're fighting the Master, and all of the weirdly dressed lingerie wives, and all of those scenes. But it's also filled with a bunch of references to other bad movies. So there are times when screaming skulls are attacking you, mm. and there are these crawling eyes that take away your health. And there's because it's a, a tribute to 80s video games, there's a flying sequence for no reason whatsoever. And at the end of the flying sequence, you have to defeat the giant claw bird. La Cacagne. La Cacagne. Yeah, I was really happy when I saw that horrible, ugly bird in the video game. I was like, yay! I'm so happy, it's the hideous Muppet abortion. Manos is even hard to stomach with the Mystery Science Theater version. <laughs> That's when you know that a movie is bad when even Mystery Science Theater isn't. I The the two ones that, that, that are really difficult for me is that movie and um, uh, Monster A Go-Go. That's a really I'm horrible sure movie. Like. It's I'm just sure so like. odd that ending just like I like I want to destroy the television. <laughs> I've 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 made my kids watch most of these bad movies. I remember specifically sitting my youngest daughter Isabella down to see Manos the Hands of Fate, and we watched right. the Mystery Science Theater 3000 version. And afterwards, we got into a huge fight because she just she got it in her head that she had to break the DVD. <laughs> that it was such a bad movie that the only thing that she could do to make herself feel better is to grab the DVD and just break it in half. 
And it wasn't like a joke. She wasn't kidding and making with the funny yeah. stuff. No, she absolutely, she had to break this DVD. It was the only way to, like, clear her soul. <laughs> it was a huge, huge fight. She will be a critic in the future. Oh, yeah. She's a critic now. <laughs> The effect where they shot the egg, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it it it's a good movie. It's a it, what 1957, so I mm-hmm. especially like the whole we're in an airplane and we're colleagues, but I'm a man in the 50s, so I'm gonna try and kiss you now, and you're gonna take it because you're a woman. <laughs> yes. And I'm an ace test pilot, and that's just how it goes. <laughs> the very 1950s sort of. You know what? You know what he reminded me of uh, sometimes. Um, what was the cartoon? I love that so much. Roger Ramjet. I his American Roger Eagle. Ramjet. It, it was from like the the 60s. Uh, yeah. I remember they showed it in Phoenix on uh, the Wallace and Ladmo show. But it was Roger Ramjet, ace test pilot. And he was just the hero with his American Eagle Squadron. That's what that's yeah. what Jeff Morrow's character reminded me of. I just loved him. Just loved him so much. <laughs> him and his I, just I, I, cocky I was a Gigantor demeanor. kind of guy. <laughs> Gigantor. Wow, that's yeah. that's amazing. I just I just uh recently tuned my youngest son into uh the original black and white Astro Boys. Yeah. Yeah, those are bizarre. Oh, and he's obsessed with Ultraman, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, my kids are are all obsessed with things that will not win them any friends. <laughs> On one of the Roku channels, I ran across Kimba the White Lion. Wow, I say, yeah. Yeah, Which Disney is... should have their asses sued for that. Yeah. And this show was, like, my all-time favorite when I was really? with your son's age. Yeah. It was, like, around two, right? Yeah. This show was yeah. just it. You know, I would just sit there and watch this fucking... And I found it on one of the Roku channels, and it's like, man, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty weird. Prairies here in, in <laughs> Oklahoma, and I thought that was really weird that of all the things... Like, I expect to see God's Not Dead, but I don't expect to see uh, all of the entire series of Kim of the White Lion. So I rented one of those, and I showed it to Maxwell, and he was really excited about it. Just yeah. anything weird. Yeah. Just, yeah, just as long as it's not Sesame Street or anything like that. My kids <laughs> my kids are down. I don't know. Sesame Street was cool. Me and Jeannie just watched an episode last Friday off of YouTube. <laughs> I love the fact that because I I saw because the, they're releasing the old school Sesame Streets on yeah. DVD, but I love the fact and it really does say something that there are warnings on the DVD and there are warnings before the episodes where they say that these old episodes may not be appropriate for today's younger children. Really? Yeah. I started. I I started a uh, rent showing my my uh, two youngest a bunch of old Looney Tunes, and there are warnings on those too. Well, the Looney Tunes in retrospect get really. Oh great. yeah, the Looney Tunes in retrospect are pretty horrible, but it, you know, but you know, but Sesame Street. Yeah, Sesame Street. They have this animated character come out before each episode in the the old school DVDs, and they say, Sesame Street was created in blank and may not be appropriate for today's younger children. And I, I, I thought that that was really, really odd, but I Maxwell loves the old school Sesame Street because it was, it, it was a bit bizarre. It was a bit different. Nowadays, they follow this rigid script and, okay, we're going to do this part now, and then we're going to do this part, and then we're going to do this part, and then that's going to be the end. But the old episodes were just the, like, stream of consciousness sort of a children's mm-hmm. show. Exactly. And, yeah, my son can't stand normal modern-day Sesame Street, but he'll sit down and watch a weird 60s or 70s one, and he'll love it. It's wonderful. Yeah. 
and I can't think of anything that could possibly be in Sesame Street. But then again, this world is getting so weird on us. I don't want to. I don't. This is a movie podcast. I don't want to go there. <laughs> you know, those old Sesame Streets were just they. They were a lot of times. It seemed like it was more artistic than actually trying mm-hmm. to teach children anything. Yeah. A lot of times it just seemed beautiful, but they're not actually teaching you a thing. But nowadays, yeah. the, you know, there are rules, and you have to do this and that. And I, 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 I can understand why they would be a warning label on it, I guess, for any other normal families out there. But, it, no, my kids love that. Absolutely love that. There's some weird stuff on those old Sesame Streets. Oh, yeah. we We saw a bit where... There were these two generic girl puppets, and they were rhyming a word. They might have been rhyming the word red. I'm not sure. And then this, like, kind of, I think he was supposed to be an artist puppet, like a beatnik or something like that. Yeah. But if you do watch that as an adult, it does take on a whole different meaning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He had a he had a he, he had a big like bushy beard. In fact, he I, I even said it's a genie. I, he looks like a proto animal. Yeah, you know, like animal in the early stages of development. Um, and then out of the center of his face, out of his beard, is a flesh colored nose. And I'm yeah. like, that's weird. <laughs> Yeah. That's weird. And he's hanging around these two young rhyming girls. Okay. <laughs> but that's watching the show from from an adult perspective, especially an adult who likes making fun of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, you know, you, you're always kind of looking for the funny and perverted side of things, just for your own entertainment. But it does work on that level, too. But, you know, stop a kid from watching something like that. Kids not, yeah. kids not going to be thinking like that. Absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah. I'm looking at the poster of the giant claw right now. It mm-hmm. looks so awesome. I hate that when the poster is just so good and just teases you so much with beautiful things, and then you have to <laughs> see it. And then it's just, then you have to see it, and it's just the the worst. It was produced, the Giant Claw was produced by uh, Sam Katzman. Mm-hmm. He did all of those uh, Bell Lugosi and East Side Kid things from the 40s and stuff. Yeah. Earth versus the Flying Saucer, and um, Brooklyn he followed up the he followed up the Giant Claw with Zombies of Moratow. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, it's really good. Yeah, like a like a like late seventies when Universal was just kind of struggling to like. Yeah. No, we're we're still doing horror movies. They're great. Here, let's let. How about this? Sure. <laughs> why not? <laughs> oh, good well, effort. I might have to track that one down. The it, zombies it, of Morristown. Yeah. Huh. But those classic Universal movies, those are just wonderful. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I I I I grew up watching those classic Universal <laughs> horror movies. You know that that they're trying to to kickstart all of those Universal horror movies. They're well, I've heard to... that they they want to try to do a, a like a shared universe, kind of like the Avengers, the Marvel movies. Yeah, and it's like. Yes, please. <laughs> I mean, as it long kind of was anyway. Yeah, because you'd see like like House of Frankenstein with a whole bunch of characters in it, and Frankenstein versus the Wolfman and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a Dracula movie that's coming out soon, and apparently after that is when they're really going to start kickstarting everything. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're, they're late in the game. They're taking a big chance. 
you know, I would really release any of those movies in, in like an off season or it's just gonna get fucking pounded. There's a there's a lot of talk about two thousand fifteen as possibly bankrupting Hollywood. Although a lot of it's coming from Disney and they've made bundles, so I, I'm not seeing that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But like there are gonna be so many blockbusters in, in twenty fifteen that the public may not be willing to go out on all of them, so somebody's going to lose out on a big budget project. Yeah, you know, it's it's always been like since I was in 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 high school, I always felt that I was really excited for the summer movies and the summer movie blockbusters because they were really about to happen. But every summer, I was more excited for the next summer. Yeah. Because I remember last summer going, oh, man, Godzilla and Guardians of the Galaxy. This is going to be awesome. And then I remember mm-hmm. this summer just going, oh, man, next year is going to be huge. <laughs> kind of like how no one ever fully likes Saturday Night Live because whatever the last set of people were, were, oh, yeah. well, hey, Saturday Night Live is good, but, oh, you remember when Kristen Wiig was on it and all of these people, and it just keeps I on haven't. going. Yeah, I haven't seen it since like the Phil Hartman days, man. So oh man, I, I love Phil Hartman. Days. No, uh, my parents would always just it, like every Saturday we had to stay up, and there was beer, and there was steaks, and Saturday Night Live, and it was just it's it's a just it's a religious experience for me now. I have to watch it. It may be good, it may be bad, but I just absolutely have to watch it constantly. It's it's my but absolute thing. Hurts. That first cast changeover, man, that was such a sucker punch, man. Um, Because there was no word about it. There wasn't – I didn't hear anything about Saturday Night Live or anything happening to Saturday Night Live. So we come to the season premiere, I turn it on, and it's like, who are all these fucking people? Yeah. And then you watch it for a while, and it's like – Okay, when are they going to get to the joke and the real cast comes back out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it just never happened. You yeah. know, and, and replacing that cast with people like Charlie Rocket and <laughs> Joe Piscopo. And wasn't, um, it wasn't. And I don't think um, Eddie Murphy came on to the second season of that cast. Wasn't Robert Downey Jr. on there for like a hot second? Am I thinking correctly? During the 80s when it was only like half a season and no one liked it and it was horrible. And I think Joan Cusack. Uh, Yes, I think, yeah, that sounds really familiar. Yeah, that was, I remember hating that. (laughs) And the weird thing is, is that I was watching recently an old episode of uh, Saturday Night Live. I don't remember who was hosting, but... Eddie Murphy came out during the host's um, monologue and asked him if um, the host would buy him beer after the rap party. And the host was just like, what are you talking about? And he said, well, I'm not 21 yet. I'm 18. (laughs) And I couldn't believe that. Like, maybe he was joking, but he was pretty goddamn young when Eddie Murphy started on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. I remember him being funny. I don't remember him being that young. Well, then again, I was kind of young anyway, but... I, I don't know what happened to him that lost him the ability to choose a script, though. You know? I had seen movies, but 48 Hours was huge, and, and uh, 48 Beverly hours Hills was Cop was, was huge, and he did... Beverly Hills Cop was Buffy massive. Then. Yeah. Yeah. It's my theory. I came up with this theory a couple of days ago, and yeah. and I, I, I 100% believe in this theory, that when it comes to celebrities, celebrities become famous for one thing, and then they spend a number of years or maybe a couple of decades distancing themselves from that thing, but eventually yeah. they will become so desperate that they will go back. Yeah. Eddie Murphy is one of those people, because I keep hearing things about Beverly Hills Cop 4. Uh, let me think of some other people. Basic Instinct well, 2. I can't be, That last Rocky was completely unnecessary. 
I like the last one. The last Rocky? I like the last one better than uh, yeah, better than, than a lot of other ones. It was a little on the stupid side. I liked yeah, it better than Rocky Five. Thing. Rocky Five was absolutely horrible. I, Rocky I Four was just like the best. One of my like Rocky Four was one of the first times when I was a kid remembering seeing a movie and going, "Wow, this is horrible." I love this. Uh, Rocky Three for me, I, that one's thoroughly entertaining. The first Rocky is an awesome movie. Oh, it's a wonderful you know? movie. A movie on just so many levels. It's so good. And I felt that the last one kind of remembered that a bit more. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. And that's why I liked it. But the, the idea that this guy is going to be fighting anybody is stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So so I, I just, I, I would have liked to, liked to have just, you know, skip the fight, man. Let's not, he's not going to fight. That's not realistic. Let's not even do it. You know? Yeah. Tell the story of this broken down old guy. You know, who had this brilliant career and it's gone. <laughs> you yeah. know? So, I mean, that's, you know, so I like it for its part. For pure entertainment value, though, I got to go with three. Yeah, I like three because it, it, it breaks him down a little bit. He loses. He yeah. loses the belt and all of that sort of stuff. Rocky IV is horrible, but I absolutely love it. But he fights Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh, yeah, Thunderlips, the ultimate male. Thunderlips, yes. I love Thunderlips. <laughs> uh, we should wind up this episode, Rev. Yes, we should. <laughs> Giant Claw is horrible. You should go see it. It's for free on YouTube. On it's the YouTube. for free on YouTube. And if you go to on YouTube on Dead Cow Film, it is in the B movie playlist. So there you go. You got no excuse. Yes, and um, if you go on YouTube and you search Root Beer Show, I have a bizarre show where I review root beer for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> I've done ten episodes. The eleventh one is about to come out. It's me and my kids and various people drinking root beers and reviewing them for no reason other than we get bored and like root beer. <laughs> episode three has boobs, so everybody should go and see it. <laughs> cool. And what's the next movie we're going to do? Um, Rock of Ages. Awesome. I love awesome. that movie so much, and my family wants to kill me for it. Like, literally <laughs> just kill me for my love of this movie. It is I, so I, I, I'm, wonderful. I'm right in that boat. I'm right in that same boat for you. And I got a lot of reasons to. But uh, oh, yeah. uh if anybody wants to contact us, we do have an email address. Yes. Hope at undeadcow.com. Awesome. So if you want to leave any kind of feedback or anything like that, that's how you can get us. Yes, feedback us. <laughs> Go visit my uh website. Uh, edwood.org, that's the home of the Church of Edwood. You should go to that. I'll update it one of these years. And there's a link there to my blog. It's called Humorously Tragic Attempts to Become a Man. It's at reverendsteve.blogspot.com. You should go to that. There's free movies and free music and occasional boobs and weird stories, and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I – you get to the boobs, and I usually I usually look at the blog, the, the first yep. part of my morning when I get a, get to work. You know, it's like, oh, just give me one last piece of my own life before I have to start this living hell for another goddamn day. Yeah, or, or something like that. You know, gotcha. I might be paraphrasing there. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then every now and then I'll scroll up, and it'll be just all those pictures of tits. And so it's yep. like. Anybody looking? <laughs> and I, I, I don't hide the fact that that's that that's like okay, hey guys, in order in a cheap attempt to get page hits, here are big boobs. <laughs> I love the fact that I'm just very honest about that. I'm going to show boobs now because I want more people to visit this website. <laughs> so here you go. Have fun, boobs. Cool. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we'll see you next week. See you next what time, guys. <laughs>